for me personally, forest is a place to relax and take a deep breath. I also noticed when walking in a forest that I pay attention to funny little details because of my profession. So I may stop and touch a stem of a tree and feel how warm it is, what is its temperature. Or in the springtime, if I see a cut branch, I might stop and just really taste the water droplets if they contain sugars. Well, I think uh, first of all, it's a place for recreation. Many of my hobbies are somehow linked to forest, for example, running or cycling or hiking or picking berries. So it's kind of uh, environment for my like everyday life. And then uh, it's also a place for kind of taking care of my mental well-being. So if I'm sad or anxious or something, then I like to go to forest and seeing the trees that have been there for decades or centuries, uh, it kind of helps to put things in right perspective. So I think it's kind of healing environment to me. For me, forest is a place for relaxation and revitalization. I spend a lot of my free time in forests. I run, walk and hike and pick up mushrooms and berries. I think that the true forest is the kind that fosters many layers of life, trees of different species and ages and all the other associated flora and fauna that maintain the diversity and diverse functions of the forests. You can live from the wood, you can live from the forest, so forest is a huge amount of things. Oh, my experience with the forest is very close to my childhood and the feeling of being equal with the forest, equal part, not like one above. So forest means shelter to me. It uh, is my imaginary space where I can uh, play also as an adult. I think uh, I couldn't live without forest because I it is such a big part of me. Well, I'm a forest scientist, more precisely docent in tree ecophysiology. So I study tree structure and function and their interaction and really focus on how they are affected by the environment. So I work in a forest a lot measure different things? Well, I'm a forest ecologist. I studied forest sciences and I work uh, in forest industry at the moment and I'm focusing on forest environmental issues. So I feel that my task is kind of uh, to safeguard the ecological values of forests while we are using forests in a commercial way. So we are using wood and I'm promoting and developing sustainable forestry uh, within my company, but also with our stakeholders, such as NGOs or uh, scientific world. Well, Greenpeace has a long lasting forest campaign that has managed to stop logging and uh, increase protection. We do policy work for better management and protection of the forests. We work to get rid of harmful forest practices and harmful subsidies. We identify high conservation value forests at the field and we produce videos, reports and policy briefings out of these materials. And we cooperate with indigenous people and we reveal greenwashing and violations against the, uh, against the, the certification criteria laws and uh, practices. And we also train forest activists, so one could say that we act as the watchdogs of the forests. Well, uh, as a CEO of Puurakentaja, my, my work is uh, to build massive wood houses. So first of all, the forest is quite crucial for me <laughs> in business-wise. Uh, forest relates, uh, first of all, when we are we are building massive wood houses, it means that we are trying to trying to use as much wood as we can in all the construction types, which means that all the load bearing walls, for example, comes from massive wood timber. So it, it means that we we are trying to use it as much as much we can, and and, and of of course we are trying to also design the houses so that uh, 
that the visible side of the, of the building inside is is wood, so there's no plasterboard or whatever used. So forest relates to my work so that that I try to use it as much as I can. Well, I have been now more than 20 years making photography, and uh, I make fabric installations to nature and. Uh, Accidentally, I find myself often in the forests and um, I place into the nature fabrics, ribbons or old clothes and uh, by placing them into the landscape or forest, I am, I am uh, aiming or trying to make images that talk about uh, um, something else than clothes and the forest. So I try to reach some kind of emotion into the image so that when a viewer looks at it, he or she can reflect his or her own um, memories or associations to the image. And in a way that that level is born in the images or in the viewer's mind. I see how forests are changing globally. Here in high latitudes, where we are living, the increasing temperature and increasing atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide concentrations have by now actually increased forest growth and also extended uh, growing season length. But in many regions in the world, forests are suffering from increasing drought stress, uh, increasing forest fires, and also different uh, biotic stresses like new insects that are invading the forests. Also here in high latitudes there are many forest related risks that are increasing with climate change such as uh, drought in the summertime, there are new insects and pathogens that are are coming and surviving the warmer winters and also because the winter conditions are changing, it may increase the risks of storm damages for the forests and also different frost damages due to late, late frosts, for example. But in general, I really feel that we have to take care of our forests and use them wisely. Well, I think that there are quite many of those, but the biggest ones at the moment are climate change and biodiversity loss. And obviously climate change is number one right now. So I think that people and the society and decision makers are having uh, many expectation, ex expectations to forests. And uh, they see that forests should be a part of solution with the climate change. So there are quite a huge expectations to uh, safeguard the carbon sinks of forests and of course we as forest industry are responsible for that as well. And then the biodiversity loss, it's not yet a, such a big topic as climate change but I believe that it's getting more and more attention and it is as important as climate change. And uh, there are also many ways to safeguard biodiversity in, in uh, sustainable forest management, such as leaving retention trees to harvesting sites or uh, increasing the amount of decaying wood or leaving buffer zones around forests. And of course, biodiversity and climate change are also linked together because the more diverse the forests are, the more resilient they are against climate change. Well, curbing the climate change and halting biodiversity loss requires significant changes in the way we treat our forests. The current use is not at sustainable levels. Forestry is the single biggest reason be behind the biodiversity fall in Finland, and we need forests to increase and maintain carbon sinks and storages. A lot of the industry-produced products are short-lived, so the carbon is released back to the atmosphere just a few years after the logging. And the amount of protection is not at adequate levels. Just less than 3% of the forests in southern Finland are being protected. And we keep subsidizing harmful forest practices like ditching, though science advises us to do otherwise. So at current, the laws and practices do not reflect 
the latest scientific information well enough to address climate and biodiversity crisis in the way they should? First, it's a big, really big solution for sustainable uh, construction at the moment. I would say, for example, that that for example, if I we build a five-story house uh, block house in Turku from massive wood, and it was uh, so that the, the equivalent CO2 was uh, was uh, in the in that house kind of balance sheet. It was so that it was one uh, one million five hundred kilograms if I recall right, the amount that it was in like in a positive side. And if, if, we, if we had uh, built that uh, on traditional ways with cement based materials, it would have been uh, like vice versa on the minus side, it would have been something like 2 million kilograms that, that it causes CO2 emissions. So it's, um, it's quite difficult to explain, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a really big thing. Well, now 20 years I have been going around Finland and also in some other countries. So I'm a bit worried to see so much uh, clear cuts, cutting, and uh, uh, the amount of forest is so small, uh, and especially the uh, virgin forests, they are so minimum. I, I often feel I need to go further and further up to the north to find something where I can be without this, that somebody is disturbing me. Often I feel forests are a bit, nowadays they don't have so many levels. I mean, trees are uh, often cultivated and they look the same. So there are no bushes or there are no hideaway places where to go for the kids. I would love them to have more possibilities to to find their forest, even if they live in cities. Forests are important for many people and for many reasons. For some people, forests are their income. For some people, they are their favorite place to, to recreate. Some people go to the forest to hunt. So I think emotions are easily involved when discussing about the use of forests. But I think that for many people, forests bring hope. Well, I think that emotions are very much present in the forest discussion. And at least in Finland, it's because that uh, people have or everyone has got some kind of relationship with, with forests. They are a place for recreation or they might even ha have some kind of spiritual meanings or, or cultural meanings. So forests are important for people. And that is why the discussion might be even quite heated around forests. I think that we as forestry professionals should uh, respect the feelings that people have and respond to them. And even though it's not always nice to get this kind of negative feedback of, of uh, forest industry, but I think that it's very important that people have channels to express also their emotions and they are valuable and they also help us to develop or improve what we do. Well, all kind of emotions. Um, sometimes I feel utterly frustrated when things are moving slow or to wrong directions. Um, I feel happy and joy at when, when we've managed to stop yet one more logging of a, a valuable forest area. And um, I feel hopeful when I can see that we've managed to increase shared understanding and formed um, kind of unexpected allies. And yes, um, it does break my heart when the forests that I used to know have been destroyed. The emo emotions towards the forest is, is something like that, that, that I try to consider that uh, how to use it most effective way that because of course all of us we have to live here and we have to we have to be in we, we have to grow there is like 8 billion people now there is few years times there is 10 12 and so on so it's the population is growing and everybody has to live somewhere so uh, I believe that with with the right usage, right usage of, of forest we can we can make the, the solutions 
So I, I believe that uh, the forest is um, that why it's maybe also emotional issue because I believe that's the solution. I'm a human being and I'm part of the nature, so so all kinds of emotions. And also in my work, I'm not looking for a special emotion. I'm more uh, open to my su subconscious mind and uh, my intuition, and I trust my inner voice, and uh, that's why how I make the images. And I believe if I feel something when making them and looking at the result, I, I hope and I believe that in that way the other people also um, feel something, and uh, it doesn't need to be the same emotion but I hope there should be some kind of a reaction. Ultimately, we need to stop emitting CO2 to the atmosphere. And we need to remove some of the CO2 that is already there. And forests are enormous carbon sink and storage. They absorb approximately one-third of the CO2 emissions that are emitted to the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels. In Finland, even 50%. So forests are also emitting volatile organic compounds to the air. And these compounds take part in forming aerosol particles and further clouds in the air that cool the climate. Also, wood is used as renewable material can, that can replace many unrenewable materials. And it also has high potential as really clever nanomaterial in surprising usages. And then last but not least, forests are home of 80% of world's terrestrial biodiversity. So we really need to take care of our forests and use them wisely, because forests are an important part of the solution for sustainability and climate crisis. Well, I think that the sustainability crisis that we are facing right now, it's very much linked to using fossil materials and fossil fuels and, of course, the emissions they cause. And I think that one important role that forests have is producing wood, because we, of course, can uh, replace many fossil materials with wood, for example, in packaging or construction or replacing plastics or even in medicines or textiles. So because it, when, one, when you use a fossil material, it never grows back on, unlike wood, it grows always back and you, you can recycle it many times. And also, uh, if we think about climate change, the carbon sinks of forests have, of, of course, quite a huge role in mitigating the climate change. And therefore, we need to kind of balance between using forests sustainability uh, in, in a sustainable way and, on the other hand, protecting forests. But I think that we can do that at the same time. Well, forests can play a significant role if we use them wise. They help uh, stabilizing the climate, maintain biodiversity and provide us materials. Half of the global cross-domestic product depends on well-functioning natural systems, including forests. So we should value the forests higher than just based on the wood production. And we should protect 30% of the forests as recommended by science. Studies also show that multifunctional forests are better at providing long-term income and, and more stable income. And they also help to maintain the other uses of the forests that are often disregarded over the wood production. I believe that, that the forest industry and the jobs it creates remains to be important also in the future. We just need to focus more on new wood-based innovations and long-lived wood-based products that can also uh, serve as a carbon storage. So the potential is huge, we just need to be smart and act wise with the long-term climate and ecological sustainability in our minds. It, prov it provides us material to build the houses, it provides us uh, no new gluing materials, all that was 
plastic based it's it's uh, we can do from the wood at the moment to be straight it can it can change it now it can change it today so it's uh, there is no it's so obvious to me to explain what what you can get from the forest and that's kind of a difficulty in here that how to say that out loud to someone who is who is in the different business at the moment because of course everybody lives believes that in their own thing but i think forests give they give us the possibility to see how important nature is to us and uh, in this very busy world we need forest to stop and go back to the basic things because uh, we need to also, I think, in my opinion, we need to understand that this process of more and more new iPad, new, 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 uh, we are not able to reach that at one day. And we have such a lot of uh, signs already that uh, forests can't cope with our demands. The children, how do they they are the, the ones who in the future make decisions. If they do not have a experience of being in the forest and uh, sensing it, how can they then uh, protect them?